those other sub counties. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Honorable Senator for Machakos, Senator Kavindu. First, uh, my registrar in uh, Machakos is Dorothy Retting, and Dorothy has other four registrars. So in terms of number of registrars, we do have uh, some sufficient number considering the total numbers that I have. Secondly, we have uh, noted the, the, the workload in Machakos County is huge, and we have gazetted new registration units no, registries, that is Mavoko and Kitimani. I will be having a minimum of a registrar for each for a start, and I hope to be able to post two registrars for the two registration uh, registries. And I think that would answer to some of the delays that have been occasioned. In terms of, you talked of some integrity issues, uh, maybe that is for me corruption. But uh, I will pick it up with the legislature in charge. There is, um, there is no reason why people should come three, four times to look for their titles. They need to, we, we have already given instructions that they must work with time, timelines so that once you come, once you make your application, you allow time to register and then just come second time is to collect your title unless the records are not there. But I know that uh, these answers will be answered finally through digitization process that we have already taken up and we'll be hoping that we can complete the exercise nationally in the next two years. Thank you, uh, Honorable Senators. Now let's go to question number 018 by the Senator for Nairobi County, Honorable Edwin Sifuna. I understand it's 017. No, no, we, we, are, we have we done this, Senator Sifuna, to ask his question first. Yeah, 018. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I wanted the CS uh, for Lands, Public Works, Housing, and Urban Development to answer the following three questions, Mr. Speaker. Number one, who holds the title deed for the parcel of land on which the Tomboya Social Hall in Makadara constituency, Nairobi City County, stands? And could the Cabinet Secretary indicate the ownership history of the said parcel of land? B, could the Cabinet Secretary explain the circumstances under which the parcel of land came into the custodial possession of a private developer who has already commenced construction works on a mall. Number C, what measures has the ministry put in place to reclaim public land, including this land in Makadara, that has been illegal, illegally acquired or encroached upon, as well as generally forestalled land grabbing in the city of Nairobi? I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Madam CS. Uh, in response to the Honorable Senator for Nairobi County, Senator Sifuna, Honorable Senator Edwin Sifuna. He wants to know what is the fate of Tom Boyer Social Hall. Honorable Speaker, I have given an answer in response, which is written, uh, Tom Boyer Memorial Hall sits on plot number 79 stroke, block number 79 stroke 782, formerly the number I have given there, LR number 209 stroke 11046. The plot was reserved to the Ministry of Public Works, that is my ministry, for development of a community hall on June 26, 1957, through an order of the governor then. The plot was leased to Kanu. Kenya African National Union Party for three years from 1967 on condition that the party pays rent of hmm, shillings one. The land remains government land and the party remains, th that's the condition, that the land was to remain 
still owned by the public works and then the party responsible for maintenance of the building is the Kanu party during that uh, terms of the lease for those three years. Kanu then thereafter applied for allocation of, pl of the plot in 1985. A letter of allotment was issued in favor of the party on 12th April 1985 for a term of 99 years. With effect from March 1985, the user of the plot was social hall steel and offices. A year that we have given an year of that detail. And uh, then thereafter, Kanu did not pay the statutory fees in, uh, indicated in the allotment letter of 10th of April 2018. The offer had since lapsed and have given a uh, also supporting an extra there, number three. A lease for Nairobi block 79 stroke 782, measuring 0 0.403 hectares, that is about one acre of land, at Peppercorn rent was prepared in favor of Kanu and registered on April 25th, or 20, yeah, 25th April 2018. I've given details in support. Honorable Speaker, on 22nd of February 2021, the parcel was then transferred to GAMI. Was uh, transferred to GAMI Limited, GAMI Properties Limited. Give me CR2. Yes, to GAMI Properties uh, Limited, I have also given supporting document to support that. The parcel having been registered as a social hall should remain as such. Honorable Speaker, uh, that is the status of that parcel. It's a public land. Honorable Senator for Nairobi, I want to confirm standing on this floor that GAMI Properties Limited got an irregular allocation and I will proceed to cancel that title. It is going to remain public property. Yeah. And maybe that. I will uh, leave a copy of the CR12 to show the individuals that own GAMI Properties Limited. My office obviously misbehaved by allowing this. But that was done jointly with the National Land Commission. We will work together using a Section 79 of the Land Legislation Act. Thank you. Honorable um, CS, I thought you just handled the three parts uh, A, B, and C, and then the rest of the question can maybe. Uh, he had enforcing strict penalties, digitization. Well, I think you have answered that you have. Your I last think I had. Part, I, think I, summarized I had said yes. I had said that we are working on digitization. We'll need support of Parliament through budget. We have already finished Nairobi. We are doing Muranga and Isioro, or digitization or the scanning in Moranga and Isioro is almost done and will be going live in those two other counties soon. So this progress will be expected, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Thank you Honorable CS. With the way uh, Senator Spoon is happy, I don't think he has a supplementary question. <laughs> <laughs> he has already confirmed. Okay, Senator Sifuna. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I, I was... I was uh, I was a bit worried when I was reading the uh, written response from the CS because it did not have the last bit there, which is the most critical bit for the people of Nairobi, on the action to be taken. I am more than happy to confirm or to hear from her that she's going to cancel the allocation because the offer to Kanu had lapsed, so they had no title to transfer. They did not, in fact, deserve to be given that title, and there was nothing to transfer to GAMI properties. I am also happy that she has told the, the nation that she's going to provide the ownership details of GAMI Properties Limited. Madam Speaker, uh, Mr. Speaker, the only thing I want the CS to confirm to me is the timeline when we can expect cancellation 
of that particular title, reversion back to the people of Nairobi of the property, and the reconstruction of Tomboya Social Hall. Mr. Speaker, because as we speak today, construction on that property is still ongoing. They are building a mall. So, Mr. Speaker, the timelines of those actions, if the CS, uh, who has already made my day, can just add the topping to the cake, uh, I will be very happy for the people of Nairobi to hear when we can expect this time, uh, this, this action to be taken. And Mr. Speaker, continue to protect us from hecklers in this house because we are discussing serious issues here about people who, rep who we represent and people are heckling Senator here. Sifuna, you are doing so. Senator Gloria, Senator Gloria, must you always make your noise in this house, honestly speaking? No, no, it's not in order, honestly. Um, I heard uh, the CS say that she's uh, intended to give, uh, I, we want them to table a document. Oh, the, we, the, I think this is online actually, CR12, to show the owners of Gami. This was, uh, you know, Honorable Speaker, I came yesterday back to the country, but uh, I ordered for that and it is available. Those are the current directors of Ngami Properties Limited. Yeah, the supplementary question maybe. Like the supplement. I think he wanted to know the timeline. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yes, under Section 79 of the Land Registration Act. I think I will need the notice. Uh, the process that we undertake is when we realize that irregularity has been committed, either or a mistake by our registry we need to issue a notice to the holders of that title and that notice is supposed to take uh, with you know it's a notice of 60 days so i will take up the process immediately so you can expect that uh, then the notice is to call the person the holder of the title to return the title failing which then we proceed to cancel it in most cases when they know it was an untoward activity Normally, they do not uh, present themselves because you present yourself and the title for cancellation or at least for interrogation. Once you don't come, we proceed to cancel. So it should not take me more than uh, 60 days to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Let us get a few supplementary questions. We'll start from Recha Julia, Senator Recha Julius. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I would like to know from the minister, there is a piece of land which was given by Pokot County Council to KVDA uh, around 1986 or 83, and it is a dam today which uh, is generating power. And so uh, to mark the end of the uh, occupied land or the land that uh, is today uh, under a dam, they put pecons, uh, or pecons, uh which marked the end that Wananchi would develop up to there or live uh, up to there. But now, uh, maliciously, some um, MPs uh, are grouping against uh, KVDA and saying that uh, they sold the land off to some unknown uh, personalities, but the accusation is so high on the ground. So I was wondering if the minister is aware and um, uh, uh, what uh, does she um, say so that uh, as an answer to those who are accusing uh, KVDA or some leaders of uh, selling the land that today is a dam producing or generating power uh, to Kenya at large. Uh, Senator, as you know, as I guided, as much as practically possible, let us just direct uh, our question to answer the original question. Uh, the CS can attempt to answer, but uh, such details might be a bit uh, difficult to get. So, uh, Madam CS. Thank you for the direction, Honorable Speaker. It's, it's, it's true that I'm not able to respond to uh, that because it has not been brought to my notice area, but KVDA is actually um, a 
Nijinse or Parasteto under the Ministry of uh, East Africa, uh, East Africa Community, Regional Development, and ASALS. And uh, they would have the details of that particular problem. But Honorable Senator can also write to me, and maybe, or to myself and the Minister for East Africa Region and give us these details. And then we can uh, try to help and resolve the problem. I, I don't know whether it's a problem where the dam has uh, gone and closed. You know, sometimes dams exceed the area of the design. Therefore, a redesign may be necessary. It could be a case where maybe compensation is not complete or a case where people are trying to use the dam to get the land or use the land that has already been purchased around the dam. I think I will leave it to you, but you can write to the two ministries for better responses. Overall, your uh, Honorable Speaker, I was asked about recovery of other public lands. Honorable Speaker, let me say that uh, we, we are in the process of discussing with the Office of the President through, uh, through hopes, and uh, we intend to move the cabinet for a resolution to allow the minister to request for all ministries to forward their public lands that are in danger or have been encroached or have been uh, grabbed so that holistically I can address all of them because it's not possible for the Minister of Lands to know which land has been uh, encroached or has been grabbed. But I think it is, as a government, we have a duty. As a ministry, I have a, a, a responsibility to assist the government to protect and recover and document public land existing and what may have been taken away and recover as much as we can, including prosecution of people who have been found to have stolen public land. Obviously, you see, even the Minister for Lands is not safe because this particular uh, parcel that Tomboya uh, Socio Ho is on belongs to the public, Ministry of Public Works. Indeed, Honorable Speaker, when I went to Kwale, to Kitare, I want to confirm that uh, Kitare prison, is it the medium or maximum, is sitting on an individual's uh, parcel of land. So I'm also proceeding to cancel those because the prison itself is sitting on land that has been grabbed, over 3,000 parcels of land. So it is not an easy matter. We have to do what is right, and uh, the support of Parliament, including these kind of questions, is helpful. Thank you. Senator Mandago, you are on the queue at the top. Uh, maybe you can ask you a question. But I don't know, you have a problem with uh, that box. It's possible. Maybe the clerks can assist me with uh, my card. Uh, Honorable Speaker, thank you very much. I, have, um, I don't know if that's a question or a suggestion to the Cabinet Secretary. On this digitization, um, I'd like to ask the Cabinet Secretary, what happens with lands that are for disputes during digitization process? And I ask that because, uh, Honorable Speaker, there is a land in question in Wasingishu County between the people of Wasingishu, the county government of Wasingishu, and the um, Department of Defense. But during digitization, you know, uh, a title that was fraudulently acquired was also digitized. So my request to the Honorable CS is during digitization, I think all lands under dispute should not be digitized because digitizing is further giving legitimacy, you know, to the fraudulently acquired titles. Number two, Honorable Speaker, the CS has said she has, she's constrained in terms of budget for titling of schools. Honorable Speaker, it is my view that now that schools receive even capitation for operations, and it only costs a maximum of 20,000 to actually get a title deed, schools should actually be asked to process their own titles. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Did I hear the Senator is proposing that we ask the schools to process their own titles? Uh, I think then that would require me to move back to the cabinet to have the cabinet uh, resolve
to do that. I don't see a big problem in the, the government. The schools are properties of the government, actually. The land is not necessarily in the name of school. It's reserved for that school, but the titles belong to the national treasury, and they are registered in the name of national treasury. So I think for us to assist to proceed to do that is important. And you also know that that is the only way we can be able to assure the validity, uh, the sizes, the survey, uh, integrity and and therefore i think it's not a bad thing that the ministry is the one that is finally doing it you can imagine this is since 1960 this has not been done so i think we will not be able to leave to the schools again some of the people around the schools are the ones who have grabbed some of the school land in that process we'll be able to return the any grabbed land on the question on digitization what happens to parcels that may be having disputes or have titles or records that are uh, in dispute or are uh, under interrogation and investigation. First, we, will, we, we capture the records that we have. But capturing the records we have uh, by scanning and putting them in as part of our digitization does not mean we will be hindered from interrogating those documentations. But also, the KDF land, I think you are referring to the KDF land. We, ha we have cancelled all those titles, so we don't longer have any problem. But where we have uh, captured the wrong or disputed land, maybe it is in court, and then we get the new record or other records to say otherwise, other than what is in our digital system, we will move to, to put that as part of our record and it is possible within that, because as we digitize, we are also using the land laws that exist. So I don't think there is going to be any compromise or danger in our, in our work. Yeah. Thank you, Senator Sosi. Godfrey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I have two, questions, two supplementary questions to the... To choose the, the one, one which is heavy. The one which is, you consider only one supplementary. Very well. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I would like to know from the CS the compensation plan they have on lands which were compulsorily acquired by the government before the onset of devolution. Uh, I am saying this because, Mr. Speaker, there is a sad case of an old man who died four years ago and is still lying in the mug uh, from a place called Kegoye within a Vihiga municipality. What happened, Mr. Speaker, is that uh, when Vihiga was gazetted as a district by the then President Moi, there were some people who were relocated to create space for the construction of the district headquarters, and this old man was one of them. They were relocated to a place in Lugari Forest. And when they went there, they found that the land had complication. So they returned back to, to their original land. They have stayed there for years. The old man died there. When he died, they took the body to the morgue, but they could not bury because the county government contested and said that that land is within the Vihiga municipality. Up to the date, the board, body of the old man is still lying in the mock. I brought this matter when I was in the National Assembly in 2021, and the then CS for Lands, uh, Madam Carone, made a commitment to Parliament that the matter was going to be resolved in six months. Mr. Speaker, it is now approaching two and a half years. Nothing has been done. What is the CS aware of this matter? And what specific action is she going to take to address this matter so that this family can bury their old man as soon as possible and stop incurring uh, mortuary uh, fees? Given that this family, even though the county government has refused them to bury their dead, they are still occupying the land to debt. 
Honorable CS. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I'm not aware of that particular matter. I would request for maybe the Honorable Senator to, for if it is him who had asked the question, to send me a copy of the question and the answer that we gave, if you have. But I will also, because I have my Chief Land Registrar, Mr. Nyandoro, here with me, I will ask him to take up and check the records and if there is something I can do depending on the commitment that the minister made, because I believe she made on behalf of the ministry, I will uh, action on the matter. However, I think also the county and yourself, Honorable Speaker, with the greatest respect, I think it's a matter that the county should have been able to resolve and help the family. But I will, on my part, see what, why the minister had said she would be in a position to deal with the matter and uh, revert back to the Honorable Senator, not necessarily on the floor, but I can uh, get back to him with a relevant answer. Thank you. Yes, I advise that the Senator Sosi you can uh, approach the ministry anytime to the CS office and see how you can be able to revive that issue. According to the answers the CS is giving, definitely she will be able to sort that matter. The way she had sorted the Tomboya Hall, community hall. What is it again, Senator Sosi? Mr. Speaker, I think uh, because the matter was raised uh, in the last parliament where I served with the CS and uh, the answers were provided by the then CS, I think they need to check their files. They will be able to get the answers. But, uh, but I will uh, oblige to provide the responses to the CS. What they gave them. If you want to help those people, don't, don't refer the CS to the files. Just initiate your own do an initiative with the CS and she will be able to assist you. But if you refer to the files, you know, and she has directed you to see her in the office and say you can sort out the matter, I think uh, that is fair enough. Uh, well guided. May, Mr. Speaker, I'll make an effort to see the CS okay. over that. Senator Roba. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, for this opportunity. First of all, I want to congratulate the Cabinet Secretary for a job well done. Um, we can see the output of your ministry. I'm even sure uh, Senator Sifuna was surprised that you gave a straight answer on his uh, issue. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I have one question. On this particular um, issue on shared functions, we have shared functions under housing, under public works, um, and my question is, at what point is the ministry actually going to initiate um, a program of releasing the assets uh, to the counties in terms of the shared, um, in terms of the functions that have been devolved? There are some functions that have been devolved, they've gone down to counties, but some of the assets are still on national level. So is there an intention to actually release those assets to the counties so that the counties can be able to have uh, control over that the issues that have been devolved. And Mr. Speaker, uh, you know, we are, we are all equal senators and understanding order 101, it is not proper for a senator to impute uh, uh, improper motive. I'm not a heckler. As you can see, uh, my contributions are valid. So I think uh, Senator, Sifuna, the, Senator are, Sifuna should understand Senator that we are, we are all equal, Mr. Senator, Speaker. Senator Roba. We are contributing. Senator Roba, you have asked your question to the CS. So do you want the CS also to comment on the issues that you are accusing Senator? No, uh, I've, I've, I've asked Sifuna the question, did. but I wanted to you pass the message the on and record. Just rest your question at that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable CS. The, the Honorable Senator Gloria is asking about the shared functions and the assets transfer of, and I think, are you referring to transfer of functions or transfer of assets? For, for assets, the national government is working holistically to see what assets should be transferred. And uh, because I know even as we sit, most of the assets belong to the national government, 
they have not completely yet been transferred, but there is, including functions, there is a team that is working on, uh, on the transfer of both functions and assets. So I, I want to believe that that will find, eventually find its way to parliament when the final list is done. It's not a very simple exercise, and therefore it requires time. Thank you. Uh, let's get the last uh, supplementary question from Senator Munyaji. I can see three more senators are still on the queue, and then I'll give you an opportunity after we ask question number 017. Uh, so we make some progress, Senator Onyong. You'll have an opportunity still to uh, ask you a supplementary question. Senator Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Fagin. My question is regard to historical land justices in Mombasa. Uh, last week, and uh, I think part of this week, the National Land Commission has been holding hearings in Mombasa uh, on, in regards to historical land injustices. And uh, uh, on Friday last week, they made uh, decisions that have created panic, fear, and despondency to the residents of Mombasa, especially within the island where many are not sure of their residences or uh, places where they have stayed for almost 100 years. Initially, during the colonial uh, administration, we had uh, the system of Liwalis. And the Liwalis were registered by virtue of their positions as trustees on behalf of the residents. However, when they, uh, the Liwalis uh, passed on, these properties were transferred or were inherited uh, through the succession system and now are no longer public or uh, public properties, but they have now ended up in the hands of the relatives of the Liwalis. And this one has caused a lot of problems because they are charging a minimum of five million for a plot measuring uh, 50 by 80 or 50 by 100 within uh, the central business district. So Madam CS, we wanted to know what is the government doing to assure these residents of their uh, residences and also to resolve this long-standing problem that has affected Mombasa Island and also part of uh, Kisauni and parts of Changamo and Likoni areas of Mombasa County. Thank you. Honorable CS. Honorable Speaker, the Honorable Senator is it of uh, Mombasa? Yes, uh, has raised a very important question. And I believe that that question is not a supplementary question. It requires to be put in writing so that I can be able to respond to you, especially noting that the activities that you have referred to are activities being carried out by the National Land Commission. You know, Land National Land Commission is also an independent body but uh, we work together. Sometimes they are able to consult, and sometimes I'm also able to consult them. So I would, uh, with the permission of the speaker, I would advise, request that that question be forwarded formally, either through the Senate or directly to the Cabinet Secretary, and I try to answer, because it's, it's not necessary that if I can answer, I don't have to come to answer it on the floor. So I would leave it to you, Honorable Senator, through the speaker. I think uh, Senator Mohamed Faki, that's a good guidance. Because I also felt it's a weight matter that he needs some good response. Thank you, Speaker. It's, uh, I, I, I agree with the CS that uh, we need to put in a, a separate question. However, I have another small supplementary on affordable houses, Mr. Speaker. You'll ask me in the, during the next question. Thank you. Because actually it is related to the question by Senator Mohamed Faki. So let us have question number 017 by the Senator from Elizabeth County. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Question 017. Could the Cabinet Secretary, one, indicate the respective value of each parcel of government-owned land that has been designated for the affordable housing projects in Nairobi, Mombasa, Nakuru and Kisumu counties. 
and indicate how many of the said parcel parcels are currently being or have been developed since 2017. Two, state the value of parcel of land assigned to respective developers for the construction of affordable housing. And could the cabinet secretary indicate the project cost per square meter of each housing unit, as well as the interest rate to be charged to buyers of those units? Three, state how many of the houses under the project are under public-private partnership arrangements. And could the cabinet secretary state the respective percentage contribution of the government vis-a-vis -vis the developers. Number four, halt all transactions involving public land until mutually beneficial formula to both the government and developers is agreed upon. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Madam CS, respond to the, three, the four sections. Honorable Speaker, may I take first allow me to take this opportunity to thank the Senate, the honorable members of the Senate, the entire Senate, for supporting the uh, affordable housing uh, levy bill that uh, came through the Senate. After an elaborate uh, discussion, we have now a, a law that was assented to on 19th of March by His Excellency. The, thank you very much for your participation and approval. Honorable Speaker, the question by the Honorable Senator for Masabit, and I also appreciate that he's on board because he has invented an apology. Uh, we should be able to work together. Since 2017, Honorable Speaker, the government, I, I want to go to the four questions. I think his question is in four parts. As you have rightly pointed out, Honorable Speaker, the first one, of course, he's asking me to indicate the value of each parcel of government-owned land that has been designated for affordable housing projects in Nairobi, Mobasa, Nakuru, and Kisumu counties, and indicate how many of the parcels are currently being or have been developed since 2017. Since 2017, the government has identified and designated about 575 land parcels, totaling to about 12,000 acres distributed across the country. These parcels were submitted by the ministries, individual ministries, uh, counties, departments. Sorry, Madam CS. Yes. Because this, uh, I can see your response is quite long. Eh? Yes. And very elaborate. So I wanted to get from the honorable member whether he has been able to go through this response so that we can save some time. Thank you. Thank you. And if you have, which yes. specific section do you feel yes. that you need? Uh, then I can be directed yes, to that. Yes. To that yes. particular thank part of you. the Thank you. Uh, thank you, honorable speaker. I'm uh, satisfied. Because let the, me finish. The answer is finished. Okay. Yeah, because I'm, the way you have really appreciated and you also said you are now on board. <laughs> it's like this question <laughs> was before. Speaker. Or you asked this question before, now you, you came on board yes. with that act. Honorable Speaker, I, I have, I have gone through the, the answers, and I'm happy and comfortable with the answers, but I have a, a supplementary questions. You have no, yeah, good. Then if there is any other member on affordable housing, like Senator, uh, first we inquire to Senator Mohamed Faki. They, you said you have no supplementary questions. I have, right? I, have sub two, uh, I have supplementary questions. Oh, okay. Uh, Just yes. ask your supplementary questions so that it can be specific. We Thank you. Uh, minutes. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Article 43 1B is very clear on the issue of uh, uh, settling people. Uh, and uh, I wanted the Cabinet Secretary to note that we had former Buxton tenants who came who, in fact, brought a petition to this house. And I am uh, in the Committee of Housing, Roads and Housing, and we d decided and agreed that these people should be resettled, 184 in number, to be given the first priority to be resettled in Buxton Estate. I would want the Cabinet Secretary to tell us if these people are going to be settled, when they are going to be settled, and if she can give a an appointment through this house for those people to come and sit with her and finalize this matter. 
the issue, the other issue I have is uh, on rural housing. The cabinet uh, secretary is aware that we passed uh, the amended law has the issue, a component of rural housing. I want to know in her regulations, what is she going to do for those people who cannot afford urban housing, who want to, reset, who want to settle in Marsabit, Isiolo, Wajia, and all those places? How uh, is she going to cater for those people that can be settled in those areas? Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Uh... Thank you. Thank you, uh, Honorable Speaker. Um, the Honorable Senator is, uh, has been following on the issue of uh, the tenants that had occupied the land in the Buxton uh, uh, project in Mombasa. You call their number 184, according to the Honorable Senator. If these people have leadership, because I don't want uh, to confirm that you can bring 184 uh, people into my office, but if they have leadership, then the leadership can uh, actually uh, visit me or you wait when I go to Mombasa because maybe I, I can plan better go to Mombasa and we deal it at that level instead of them coming all the way to Nairobi. Uh, so we then we can see what issues are still remaining, but in the meantime, those issues can be documented and forwarded to me through your office, Honorable Senator, or through the leadership. I suppose these people have some leadership. Through their leadership, they can document the issues, send to me, and then looking at the issues, then I'll be able to make a decision to either visit, uh, go to Mombasa, and uh, we have a meeting there in Mombasa. On the question of rural housing, uh, Honorable Speaker, I think this was a provision that this Senate found necessary in our affordable housing uh, 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 law. And uh, we obviously, as a ministry, our work is to implement. We are preparing the regulations. And I, for me, I think what is important is, I believe Senate will be part of that uh, preparation. I may not give, be able to give a concrete answer because this will require us to examine materials, technology, and the budget. And of course, the, the, the probability, how do we, in terms of economics of scale, how do we manage to, who and how do we deal with in terms of our rural setup? As, as you can imagine, we are talking about the whole country. There will be need for a budget. We need to rationalize and we need to see what is suitable and whatever material that government puts in money on, that material must also be put in the code, the building code that approves materials and actually the building code is coming to the house. And, and therefore, it is not an answer that you can get immediately, but it is something that we will all work on. Of course, we need to look at technology as part of the solutions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Senator Onyonka, Richard. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, <coughs> the reason why you saw I was nearly becoming anxious was because I have not had an opportunity to meet the CS before she became the CS because the last time I was with her, she was making a political commentary on TV and she was saying, we will win and you will lose. And I said, no, you will lose and we will win. And then she told me, in fact, Uhuru and his friends and everybody will go. And then I'm shocked now, the other side is now telling Mamangina, sorry, we are coming to be with you, sorry. So I was excited, Mr. Speaker, to see her because I have utmost respect for her. Madam CS, I also want to uh, sincerely thank you for confirming Mr. Nyandoro. You know he happens to come from where he does, but I'm happy that you looked at meritocracy and agreed to give the best qualified person the job. I really thank you for that. Mr. Speaker, the question I, supplementary question I'm asking the CS is maybe suggestive. Would the minister be comfortable to actually confirm to this house 
that the issues that are, that are bedeviling the Ministry of Lands and the land question in this country is because of very simple things. For example, we have no spatial planning, which is completed. We do not know which pieces of land were allocated and who allocated them and whether they suffice on the legality of their existence. That the issues that you have that are in Kitale right now about prisons land are really questions which are historical and that the challenges we have is that the institutions that are supposed to function and indeed one, uh, one of the, those institutions is her ministry has been unable to perform and deliver on the issue of land. Would the minister be comfortable to tell this house whether therefore it's possible that she can make sure that in the shortest time possible we have spatial planning and so that we can be able to do what the Rwanda government has done. And Mr. Speaker, what is shocking, or maybe not shocking, is that the people who did the special planning for the country known as Rwanda are Kenyans, and they are known. Is it possible that we can also do that so that when somebody is buying land, or when somebody has been allocated land, or when somebody is having a problem with their land, they can immediately know have the detail, the size of the land, the location of the land, the value of the land, and any development on that land. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Um, uh, Madam C.S. Honorable Speaker, uh, I want to take uh, the commendation and the congratulatory note from the Honorable Senator in humility because uh, he knows that we did very many debates with him at the national television, and uh, many times he would get very upset with my contributions, uh, but uh, that was for debate purposes. And I warned him severally, he refused to listen. And I, I hope that I have permission to speak like that on this floor, but uh, I hope he I'm can... the two of you to exchange <laughs> that presenter. Thank you, thank you. Are you sure I hope he will the, read the signs now early, uh, so that uh, then we can be on the same page. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but um, say, suffice to say that uh, he is a very ardent, very, very able debater, and uh, we, we really benefited, all of us, from his contributions during the debates. Uh, may I say, Honorable Speaker, that uh, he raises very fundamental issue in terms of what is ailing the entire ministry in respect of especially then the land tenure, land security. The question of land security is critical, is key. And uh, we, as we plan, we are planning with that in mind because we would want to guarantee security of uh, tenure and security of records. And that's why we have agreed as a government, as a ministry, to go digital, to digitize, to ensure that you can at least, you know, the stories, even today, Honorable Speaker, as I stand here, I get very upset because and my, 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 my officers know that I have said that there is no way you can give me a response that the file is missing. Whenever a file is missing, there is some funny business going on or some irregularities uh, likely to be committed by disappearance of a file. But uh, this is something that the country must also now agree, and I take the opportunity, Honorable Speaker, to, to, urge, to urge the public not to take matters, land security, casually, and not to engage in buying land that they have not received a proper certification in terms of searches and record checks by the land registries. Having said that, I have also told the government officers managing our registries that they will take personal responsibilities. And we have so far, Honorable Speaker, taken I think three or four, two are under suspension since I came in, and the two are already facing court charges because of uh, irregular uh, recording or documentation of land. It's, it's, quite a, it's quite a task 
The answer will be technology, use of technology and digitization. And therefore, Honorable Senator, I, I believe as a country, that is something we must aspire and that's what we should be looking forward to. I should be made uh, put to task to be able during my tenure to complete digitization. We have two types of spatial planning, the county spatial planning and the national or spatial planning. The national spatial planning is, is, is basically complete. The challenge we are having is the county spatial planning. And uh, the governors have not taken up this without appearing to accuse the counties. Uh, they have a challenge. Very few have taken up. I think I, I, if, I, if I'm correct, about 10 counties are on course. The others are not on course. It's a very important aspect to have spatial planning because if you don't, and then of course, if the spatial lack of planning is, a, is planning to fail. And therefore, I am also calling upon the counties to take up this task very seriously. We are in the process also of doing necessary geospatial surveys, uh, mapping and uh, georeferencing. This is an exercise that is going on, CADESTA uh, preparations uh, for purposes of us to be able to digitize. We have to use those two things, the CADESTA preparation and of course uh, georeferencing. Then we'll be able to resolve many disputes relating to even survey and uh, and uh, the boundaries. And, and therefore, I think we, we, this government will be on course. We, that's where we need to put our money into in terms of these questions and we, we will be able to deal with the lad grabbers maybe up to maybe eight, maybe a hundred percent if need be. I have no tolerance with them. Some of them have called me arrogant, honorable speaker even if they are facing court cases for whatever. I know some of them are very unhappy, but some of them are also very influential, and therefore we need to just use our documentation properly so that we can keep away uh, people who want to, to steal both public land and private land. Thank you. Uh, thank you. That was uh, a long uh, number one question from Onyonka because it involved the three, three parts political, social, and, the right, and then the question. Honorable Senators, we have four Senators on the queue, and we didn't need to close with the, the CS for, for lands. I want to share maybe two, one and a half minutes each, every member. And uh, Honorable CS, if you don't have the exact question, you can even go and give the, the answers later, later yes. so that we can uh, make some progress. So, Senator Vazishek. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, Honorable Speaker, I want to ask that, uh, uh, CS, that uh, among the proposed units, which is actually under construction already, is Wajia. Wajia, I've, I've seen some houses under construction in Wajia Township. So may I know how many units is being built in Wajia Township? Uh, how many floors will these uh, houses go? Because Wajia has actually many challenges in terms of, you know, the solid structure and uh, sanitation problems and sewage because of the, the, the high level of water. Uh, Wajia is still experiencing sewage problems. So I don't know whether the project has considered all those factors uh, which have been undertaken now. Because sewage problem, Wajia has no sewage. It has sewage problems, it has water problems. Uh, and the, the solid structure actually is you know, sandy. So, and uh, if you will be building, you know, houses, with high, 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 high rise for houses, uh, you might experience some challenges. So I wanted to know how many there are, what is actually the height of this, how many, how many flows, and whether you have taken care of any consideration of uh, the sewage systems and all these things that are not existing or now. from the CS whether that's a, a question you can answer now or maybe you provide the answer later to the Honorable uh, The Wajia. Wajia, we have 220 units that are coming up. 220 units uh, of different uh, categories. The original design was is for social, affordable, 
and a few market uh, units, and therefore it, that one is on course. Uh, let me say that uh, for purposes of this house, that we shall have county projects at county level, but we shall also have constituency level projects. This Wajia is one of the constituency level, I say constituency because we are also using constituency as a unit to ensure equita equitable distribution of this project because they, for us, they mean a lot. For the people of Kenya, they mean a lot because they mean employment, they mean economic uh, sparring, and they mean a lot of economic activities around the projects, including employing the youths. Single project like this one will have between 300 and 400 uh, youths, uh, not, with, uh, not forgetting the other uh, issues that arise, you know, people working, the shops around receive this money, you know, it's, it's not a bad project. So every constituency will have, and we will endeavor to do that in the course of our term, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Senator Dedito John. Can you? One minute. Uh, th thank, you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, for me, I want to congratulate the Minister and uh, to ask her, apart from the creations that were mentioned by Chute concerning the rural affordable housing, for that to be very effective, uh, Mr. Speaker, we need to ensure that we have, uh, we provide land ownership documents to the owners of the land. I just wanted to know what is she doing uh, and especially to the people living in the slums because they're the people who need even those homes more than the other people. Mr. Speaker, you come to places like Laikipia, you go to a village called Maina Village, they don't have uh, title deeds. You go to a place like Rikie, Majengo, they don't have their title deeds, Mr. Speaker. I just wanted to know, uh, apart from the, those villages in Laikipia, what is she doing concerning the land ownership, for especially those people living in the villages and in rural areas, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Madam CS. Uh, when you say villages, Honorable Senator, I, if you mean colonial villages, I had uh, already answered that question and said that uh, during my tenure, I'm going to finish titering for all the colonial villages. Now, uh, villages like, uh, or areas like um, Kwamaina or Maina, I know where it is, and there are many like that where titling is a problem because most of the time the land does not, indeed the land does not belong to the people living there. There are parcels of, uh, there, there are parcels of lands or land just given to them either by the chiefs or by people who just come and grab and they start issuing titles uh, in, in, in wherever they find empty land. It is not easy to first issue titles because any titles do follow planning. And uh, the way most of those houses are built, you'll find that uh, even planning for roads, for sewerage purposes or facilities becomes very complicated. But I know I'm aware that minor, minor area of, uh, between Nyandarwa, is, is it Nyandarwa or is it in Laikipia? in Laikipia, it's a, we have been asked to do titling and we are looking at it. We honorable senator, I can give you details of whether that will be done and it's, it's quite a task but we will endeavor to see because also the cases of how small can you go in terms of the parcel of land also becomes a big challenge. Some people have own places that are not even 0.000 something and therefore you can imagine that it is not an easy task but we and policy i'm coming back to this house before june with the national land policy uh, so i think i have answered that question yeah, sure. in terms of regulations you can help us to think through because we will be coming to you i honorable speaker i did not answer the question on water and sanitation and sewerage by honorable senator for for wajia but he knows that uh, that issues of sewerage, where, where we build on a bus, where we have a project, we endeavor to provide necessary facilities working with other government agencies, whether it is water or sewerage, 
we will ensure, of course, there is connectivity. And if there is no sewerage, then we will be able to provide necessary uh, sewage system for that specific project. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Um, Senator Mohamed Faki. Honorable Speaker, one. my question is regard to the affordable housing. Uh, uh, there are members of uh, the civil service or public service who are staying in the uh, Botella estates in Nairobi, uh, Shaurimoyo, and uh, part of Jogorod, where they have been issued with notices to vacate uh, their houses for construction of new units. Honorable Speaker, these units were constructed about 10 years ago during the Kibaki administration and they are fairly modern and uh, new uh, houses. And uh, I'm wondering why is the government demolishing such units at a time when people do not have houses? Thank you. Can I combine with the supplementary question from the Nairobi Senator? Maybe it might involve the same projects. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, when the CS appeared before us as the Housing Committee, we did uh, explain to her uh, our objections to the Housing Act and uh, explain to her that it was on principle. I'm sure she's aware that we in the minority are still going to ask the courts to have the last say, led by Senator Umtata. Mr. Speaker, the question that was raised by my colleague from uh, uh, Mombasa, Faki, in fact, the ministry has given uh, the residents of uh, Jogorod Phase 1 and 2 Jama, Botella, Ahero, and Mawenzi Gardens to vacate their houses uh, by the end of April. Of ne uh, uh, by the end of April, uh, that is 30th April 2024. And if you see the uh, the notice that has been sent to residents, uh, contains a clause here that says uh, that tenants will be accorded priority to purchase or rent a house once the redevelopment is complete. In addition to the uh, question that has been raised by Faki. Because, Mr. Speaker, if you see, I have a photo of those houses here. These are not houses that uh, you can compare to the houses, say, in uh, uh, Lumumba Estate that were built in the 50s. These houses are less than 10 years old. What rationale, what is the rationale of demolishing such houses to build something that will look exactly like this, Mr. Speaker? We believe it is a wastage of public resources. Number two, Mr. Speaker, can the CS confirm whether there are agreements that have been signed by this, uh, between the, the ministry and these residents that will guarantee them what the ministry is saying in these uh, in this, uh, notices. Because, Mr. Speaker, this was the same story in Baxter that the residents were told. When the houses were built, it became another story. And because we said we don't want another Baxter, I want the CS to assure me as the Senate of Nairobi that agreements have been signed with the current residents of these estates that they will actually be given first priority when the units are rebuilt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Uh, that's the last uh, supplementary question for the CA, to the CS uh, lands. So we'll summarize that uh, question, the two questions from the two senators. Then, uh, we call it a day. I, I think the questions are basically the same. The two questions regarding uh, Shaurimoyo, Botera, the various estates that uh, we gave along Jogo Road that uh, we gave uh, notices for people to vacate. We have had, uh, we have been, because we also listen, as a government, as a ministry, we listen. And I know this question was raised by Honorable Senator for Nairobi when I appeared before them, before the passing of the housing levy bill. I believe he's now on board. If he's and uh, if he's not, I'm sure he'll soon be on board. I hope he'll be on board because this housing program is a useful project for the people of Kenya. I, I want to say that for the Botera, Shaurimoyo, we are coming up with various projects there because the land is a lot and the number of people using those houses, and those houses, you agree with me, honorable senator, honorable members, through the speaker, that they are houses that uh, do not hold a total of maybe 3,000 or 2,000 people. But when you look at the entire land and what we can do with affordable housing, I think it would be in putting the land 
into better use because we also, as a ministry, manage, land, manage the land and the land use is under my docket. Therefore, we have agreed this Monday and also last week, my teams from the ministry, uh, Department of uh, Housing, visited this place uh, and there is an agreement. I have been advised that they, the residents are now in agreement and we are extending the notice to October, November, depending on where we, October, November, and uh, we will, we have also agreed that we shall give them relocation, uh, we shall facilitate relocation as people affected by the project. It's a small amount of money and I believe uh, His Excellency has expressed himself on that. As a ministry, we do provide some little or amount of money for relocation, you can pay your rent, depending on the agreement in each particular place. Between six months and one year, we are able to provide the rent for similar, or at least noting that many of them are even paying rent where they are, and they are able to tell us how much rent they are paying. So we give that for six months, and there is an agreement, and the notice will be extended, and uh, it will be in writing. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, thank you. I think Adams, I've yes. answered the entire question. <coughs> yes. <clears throat> so that is the end of the question and answer session from the CS Runs and Housing. So thank you very much, Madam CS, for your very elaborate answers. And the member who is happy today is the Senator for Nairobi. He's a very happy man because of all his issues have been addressed professionally. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, welcome back to the Senate any other time that uh, we request you to avail yourself. So that's and then, sir, thank the you, good thank work you. that you are doing to the Kenyans. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Myself and my team. Yeah. Definitely. When I, when I refer to you, it's your entire team and the family. So, Honorable Senators, uh, we have now the CS for Energy, who is coming for the Senate. Maybe you shouldn't be ashamed.